I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Racism and the church, that's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, donate. If you love our videos, and the dog, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, and donate. Your tax-deductible gift keeps higher things, a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation, keeps us a rolling. Oh, oh, and if you're watching this on our new app, which is available on Google, Amazon, and uh, iTunes, um, go ahead and, or on the Higher Things website, the new Higher Things website, skip, click that subscribe button under the video or on the video shorts page. Sooner or later, that will get na natural. It's not there now, okay? There used to be a show on in the 1990s where if you were stumped by a question, you could phone a friend. That's what we're going to do on this edition of the video short. We're going to phone a friend of mine. Um, I have very few friends. This poor guy is one of them. Uh, pastor Chris Hull is the pastor at a at Zion Lutheran Church. In, there he is in... Uh, uh, Tomball, Texas. Got it. There we go. There you go. Tomball, yeah, Texas. Good job. I, I know. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm going to split the screen. I'm going to try to split. No, I'm not going to split. Here we go. Why not? There we go. There's one button. And the two of us, you didn't know that we were going back and forth, ping ponging. So we're. No, I didn't. You and I were, were talking. You called me and we were talking about what was going on in Minnesota. And it was such good gospely stuff that my, my mm -hmm. reaction to it was, yeah, I. I'm not stealing your stuff, even though the gospel's free. But before we talk about racism in the Christian church, it begs the question, you and I are two Southern boys. Yes, I'm indeed. from South Louisiana. You're from Georgia. Sorry about the championship game there. Um, I, mm. I, was, I couldn't resist it. But um, we're, we're, we're two white guys from a predominantly Midwest Christian church, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And we're also, um, it, it's sort of, white clergy screams white privilege. So what do you and I, or what do you as a Christian pastor have to say about um, racism in the church? I don't know. I just don't know. I'm kidding. I mean, you and I are good for one, one thing and one thing only, and that's preaching Jesus. That's handing Jesus over to people that need him, that need his work of reconciliation. They need the gospel. All we're good for is absolution and Jesus. And I mean, I know you you live in a state. I mean, mine is very holy. I'm in Texas now, so we don't allow the gambling. But I know your state does. So you would get this reference as you and I are like slot machines of absolution. And every time someone comes and sees us, they hit the jackpot. They get it. They get absolution. They get forgiveness. They get Jesus. And that's the only thing we can talk about in this time is where is Christ in all of this? And I was I was watching. Am I skipping ahead here? Am I allowed to do this? Am I allowed to go and it's, continue it, talking? I, I phoned know. the friend, bro. It's it, okay. You're I up. Didn't, I just, I'm just making sure, you know. Um, <laughs> when when you when all this happened last week, and and this isn't something new. Racism isn't a, a new thing. It, it's a reality of the fall, a reality of sin. That doesn't mean it's okay. It means it has to be put to death, and the only place it can be put to death in is in Jesus. And last week, a lot of people were quoting, and this is fine to quote it. It's a good thing to quote. It's Galatians 3.28. You know, there's neither uh, slave nor free, male nor female. In Christ, he covers all of us. But what we have to get first is that Galatians 3.13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For as it is written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. My hung on a tree. I liked hanged. We're a divided household. It's okay. We I'm will showing them the text, brother. I'm showing them the text. Christ oh. redeem us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is, who is hanged on a tree. Um, so they're seeing my screen and now you and I are in a corner. All right. So oh, there's the text. Thing. All right. So like they, they get less of us and more of Jesus with this. So, um, what I love about your take on this is, is the foundation 
for there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free man, we're all one in Christ. The foundation for that is previously in the chapter where you're directing right. us to verse 13. And, and so Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. How does that help us um, with this subject of, of loving our neighbor and, and, and racism? When you read Luther's lectures on this, Luther uh, taught on Galatians a bunch of times. That was a loud squeak, man. Um, Luther taught on this a couple times. Oh, good heavens. You can't do this to my ADD sub. You know? I'm, I'm sorry. Gonna, I'm not going to move my chair anymore. I say, right. don't move at all while I'm talking. I said, right. no, it's fun. Um, <laughs> uh, Luther spoke on this a couple times, and his Greater Galatians lectures from 1535, when he gets to this section, he brings up this thing called the Blessed Exchange or I call it the happy switch. Jesus takes all the bad stuff of us and grants us all the good stuff of him. He takes all of our sin, all of our anger, all of our frustration, all of our doubt, all of our anxiety. From A to Z, he takes all of the sin. He takes everything that is ours. And Luther even goes a step further to say, on the cross, the law didn't find the perfect son of God. On the cross... The law found Cain the murderer, David the adulterer, Rahab the prostitute, Peter the denier, Judas the betrayer, Saul the persecutor, and he found you. On the cross, he found you and the dregs of your existence. He didn't find you at your best moment. He found you down in the sewer. So what he did was he took all of humanity on himself on the cross, and the law found him and put him to death. So what does that mean now? It means that we receive everything that is Christ. Like it says in Song of Solomon, my beloved is mine and I am hers. Everything that is Christ is now ours. His righteousness, his holiness, his perfection, his forgiveness is ours. So that changes how we view people then and how we see people, how we look at people. We don't look, don't look at them. We don't look at their sin. We don't say, well, well, that that's the liar. Well, that's the gossiper. Well, that's the good for nothing who doesn't come to church on Sunday. Well, that's the goody goody who shows up to church every Sunday and makes sure everybody knows about it. That's not what we see. We see is the righteousness of Christ. You know, like when you're growing up, your mom uh, taught, maybe didn't teach you, but my mama was a good old, old Southern gal. She said, Chris, always see the good in everybody. And I said, okay, mama. But as I grew and got a little more full of myself. I said, well, mama, isn't everyone sinful deep down? So we put, shouldn't see in everybody and said, just cover them in Jesus. And she had her famous saying, be quiet, Chris. It was a good, good saying. But the reality is that's what we do is we cover each person in Christ. So we just mentioned sin, but it also gets to who we are. We, we don't see black. We don't see white. We don't see what country you're from. We don't see American, Canadian, German, Scottish, Irish, whatever it is. It's Christ. Christ has taken all of humanity. Therefore, Christ is who you place over all of humanity. And in I that love, way, we love our neighbor. What I love about that is that you are now, um, now we're going to look at this in not in a social way. We're, we're not, yeah. we're no longer looking at this. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, sorry about that. So many kids. <laughs> I love you, man. Are a blessing from the Lord. And my uh, oldest one, who's even confirmed now, fell asleep on the job there. So don't worry. I just covered him in Christ and I love him unconditionally. We, we only got a minute left anyway. So you're going to be fine. So but what I what I love about this is you're, you're basically directing us back to Christ. So he's yeah. taken on all our sins. And so I am, I bear his righteousness. I get his redemption. I get his inheritance. I get the very right hand seat of God. And if that's true of me, then it's also true of my neighbor. There's no place for me to look down on my neighbor for any reason, either their sin right. or something about them. So round no. us out in the next minute with some good gospel. Um, and then we'll let you go and get your uh, savior kid. Get my daughter who is clearly upset with one of her brothers. So, and we'll deal with that later. The reality is why do we react this way to people? And it's not because of them. Most of the time it's because of ourselves. We hate someone because we see in them something we hate in ourselves. But guess what? Christ has taken what you hate in yourself. He's taken 
the things that make you feel guilty. He's taken the the sins of your past, the sins of your present, and the sins of the future. He's taken all of it. He's taken the things that when you look in the mirror, you say, who am I? How can I be this way? He has taken it means it's not yours anymore. It's not your burden to bear. And he bore it for you perfectly and put it to death. So you're forgiven. And, that, and that's all that matters. My friend. You are righteous as he is. My friend, Pastor Chris Hull, pastor at um, Zion Lutheran Church in Tomball, Texas. Um, friend of mine and a, a, a friend that I phoned on this, my first phone a friend for help, <laughs> who has pointed us to the suffering and death of Jesus who died for all, raised for all, lives for all, and in that, we love others. Not with our own love, but with his love. Thank you, Pastor Hall. Thank you, man. Fun times. Fun times all around. I've been Pastor Borgart and Pastor Hall, and this has been another Higher Things video short.